Hey guys, so in this video, um, or I guess a series of videos, we're going to be installing a sprinkler pump. So as you can see now, uh, my sprinkler system is on city water, and uh, that is getting quite expensive. It's a typical residential system with five zones. City water comes up through, through here. Uh, I've got a master valve. But the nice thing is, is that I have a canal in my backyard all the way down there. So I was going to dig a trench from all the way back, all the way back there, all the way down here, run that PVC pipe that you see, and mount a sprinkler pump here, somewhere in this neighborhood. Now I do have an electrical box right there on the side of my house that I can draw power from. That works out kind of nicely. And I already purchased this sprinkler pump that you see here on the workbench. Um, got it on Amazon. You can have had it for quite a while. It's kind of dusty, but it's a it is a one horse Flowtech. Uh, I got one of these screens for the inlet to keep uh, from sucking up fish and other things. There's a sock somewhere around here that fits over this. I don't know where it is. And I got this uh, this contactor to start and stop it. Just a Rainbird. I think it's actually a relabeled Monroe. So the plan is to, <clears throat> once we get all that done, is to use the master valve switching in here to control that contactor that you saw there. So we'll run 24 volts from the, the uh, sprinkler timer, the rain machine sprinkler timer, to the 24 volt low voltage coil here, which will jump the high voltage to the motor and start it. Unfortunately, this project involves a lot of digging and I absolutely hate digging, so I'm not gonna film that part. Not really all that exciting but so you'll see that whole area dug up um, I know that there's a lot of other plumbing in this area too that I got to watch out for I know the water main from my house you kind of see the water meter concrete cover over there the water lines are plastic in this neighborhood up to the house and it runs right under where I'm walking comes up to about here, tees off, goes to the sprinklers, and the other end of the tee goes here and transitions to copper underground. I know because this whole area was dug up because I installed these water filters years ago. Um, and I transitioned to uh, Type L copper just for uh, durability. Didn't want any plastic pipe breaking. The plastic pipes in this neighborhood are kind of known for breaking. I've had a couple neighbors ride over their their uh, their water pipes and create a flood. So what I'll probably end up doing is once we mount that that pump, I'll just shut off the city water here, and just by turning this ball valve, and I'll leave the ability to switch back to city water if I ever decide to, or perhaps if a future owner decides to just got to worry about backflow prevention because you can't we have to make it so that there's no way that canal water I, mean, I know you can't see the canal is a lot of vegetation but there's had to make sure there's no way canal water can flow back into city water because obviously the canal water is untreated there's who knows what's in there so we'll have to use some kind of backflow prevention device there I believe this master valve serves as backflow prevention I could be wrong about that um, but we'll have to do something a little bit more formal here since we're introducing an obvious contaminant into the system. So um, I'll get started digging that trench and uh, we'll resume the video once I have something to show. Starting now. All right, so after about an hour and a half of digging with my wonderful helper here, wait. Hi, I'm Alyssa. Yep, that's my wonderful daughter, Alyssa. She's seven. She helped me dig this whole trench. 
mom's at work. Our mom's working. And uh, so now down here in Florida, we obviously don't have any frost issues to worry about. So this doesn't have to be buried that deep. Um, this is maybe six, eight inches below, below grade. And that should be sufficient. And you can see how far that trench goes. We didn't go all the way to the canal yet. That's gonna be a bit of a, a project to get through all that vegetation, but getting through the lawn was pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, and again, I did a lot in my, in my I know. We were hacking. We were hacking, hacking through roots and, and everything. And but we had fun, right? Yeah. Okay. And now so, we're gonna glue stuff. Yep, we're gonna glue the pipe together. Right after this video. Yep, we went to Lowe's and we got some uh, PVC cement, some couplings, some elbows, and all sorts of other lovely goodies. And, uh, what? Okay, you're gonna go drink your Coke? Okay. She's adorable, huh? Um, yeah, so we're just gonna start to cement all this together. Um, might do a quick video on that one as well for those of you that haven't done any PVC work before. It's very, very, very easy. Uh, if you can use Elmer's glue, you can glue PVC pipe together. This is just inch, inch, and, a half, inch and a half schedule 40. Um, some might say you should use schedule 80 below grade, but Honestly, I don't think I have any issues. This pipe is pretty freaking strong, so. All right, we'll pick it up when we're ready to glue. All right, so these are the products you typically use when you're um, cementing PVC. You need to use the primer. This comes in various colors, but uh, one that we got at Lowe's, the handy pack came with purple. And uh, just PVC cement comes in a handy pack. So first step is to brush this purple stuff all over the pipe and be careful this stuff stains a lot really badly. So you just use this little brush. You don't need glitter. You if, said I all glitter. right, that's fine. All right, you can put some glitter on. After. Yes. So we get the outside of that pipe really good. That's glue. And we get the inside of this fitting. This is just an inch and a half coupler. No, this is primer. Mm. The glue is clear. Let that sit for a minute. Let's get the pipe that's laying in the trench. Got some dirt in there. We're so, we're so dirty. Yeah, we are a little dirty. We've been working hard. Yeah, we have to go through the canal, which is going to be tough. No, we don't have to go through the canal. We just have to go into it. The pipe does. Well, that's going to be hard. Spider All right, so now, spider. that's okay. Spider's over there. He's not going to bother us. No, now we take some of the cement. That's glue. Yep, this is the glue. Coat on the inside there, inside there, a little bit on the outside here, like so, and on the outside here. Dad, it's turning purple Yep, that's all right. Like that. And then it's just a simple matter of shoving that fitting on, holding it for a second. That's okay. And then shoving that one on there. And within a, about a minute or so, that's a that makes a really, really strong joint. Yeah. So I usually hold them together for a minute or so yeah. here. My name's Alyssa again, if you yes. can see me. I think they know your name. Yay. So that's one. It's a common name. I know like three Alyssas. Yeah. One's our neighbor's um, friend. All right, so that's how you glue a PVC joint. Uh, I'm not gonna film all these, obviously. It's pretty much the same procedure, just rinse and repeat. Pretty straightforward. All right, so this is the end result. Um, left a couple feet unexposed at either end just so we could uh, put the finishing touches on, uh, kind of running out of daylight. But you can see the trench is dug and buried. And the grass should fill in probably in a couple months. It'll take a while with this time of year. This is January. AC drains are going full bore. So I left this bunch of pipe out here. Gonna dig up that area there and just plumb it into the, uh, the sprinkler system that I showed you before. So that was the hard part of all this, although maybe getting actually to the canal through that vegetation wound up being the hardest part. There's a lot of trees and nonsense back there I'll have to cut down. Anyway, till phase two.